I just want to say thanks to the guys that gave me the heads up on uh, places to get a single leaf spring. I ended up going to Londonderry, New Hampshire, which was about a half hour, <coughs> half hour ride from me. Check this place out. They made it on the spot, took about 10 minutes. Uh, made up the U-bolt and everything for it too. They do a lot of big stuff apparently. But uh, 100 bucks for the, for the leaf, the hardware. Everything kind of goes along with it. So now we just gotta put that sucker in. All right guys. So this is the spring they made up for me. And they, I think they cut it down from a larger spring. Now it's probably the stock part number of what they uh, ended up with. Then they attached uh, these two guys on the ends and then also came with the hardware. We're going across there and then there's the pinch bolt in the center of the pack. And uh, the two shackles, where are they? Sorry. U-bolts, not shackles, and those two guys. So all that came to uh, $101, which is uh, not bad for something that gets made up uh, on the spot, and a lot cheaper than uh, having to go buy leaf, pa leaf packs. So we're on the truck. Well, there's your problem. You can see that that end is no longer connected to that end, and it's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> and what they have is a clamp store uh, of sorts that kind of wraps around and holds the pack from uh, shifting from left to right. And if you actually notice, the very next spring is already uh, uh, kicking out on an angle that should be centered over it. So those new ones, because it would be so hard to try to get that leaf spring pack on and over these guys, some people take them and spread them out to go and do it and bend it back. They came up with that other solution, which is just straight up and then having a bolt that goes through it to uh, recapture that. So I think we're going to dig in on this. And first is uh, we'll get a floor jack under here. We'll put it underneath the axle. But I want to see if those guys, where are they? Those guys actually want to come off with the impact gun. So I'm going to uh, spray a little juice on them and see if they uh, will come off with the impact. If not, we're just going to cut them with a whiz wheel, get them out of our way. But uh, I'm a hoarder. And I look at those as something to go in my stash. Let's give her a little PB blaster. I have a feeling they're not going anywhere. They look pretty bad. <laughs> The reason why I was going back and forward, uh, sometimes if you get just a little bit of rock or play in the nut, you start getting some of the material out of it and you start clearing the, the path of the threads. But in this case, it's just not worth it. I'm sure heat would help, but uh, again, we have new ones. So we're gonna chop chop instead. I'd say we probably cut it, I don't know, probably about right there and right there. I might have to do two cuts Depends on whether I can finagle the, the cut off half with the L on it out of the hole in the bottom. Let me get my little squints on and some noise uh, buffering. You guys put your hearing protection on. Watch your eyes.
Boy, that second one wasn't eventful at all, huh? I was waiting for that one to really let go. That's got a there's a bolt in the center of that that holds the whole pack together, and that's got to come out too. Uh, probably gonna let it down a little bit and uh, take some of the pressure off of it. See if it opens up a little. I think the shock is topped out too, so I don't think it'll allow the axle to drop down anymore. We might have to take that shock off too. But uh, I see a project, the whiz wheel. We'll cut that guy out of there. And that guy might pop pretty good too. Because that could be under pressure. I'm going to have to get that so the axle drops down more on this side. So I think we're going to unbolt the shock. That's it. My, my only other choice probably is letting the uh, jack and the leaf spring pack up, but that's not going to help us when we go to put it back together because they really want to be curved. That's where C clamps come in. Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I got that bolt out of the shock. It was easier than expected. See if that reel come down now. I don't want to go too far, but we got to get enough to clear the bolt. All right. That bolt. So that's where you have to have enough room to feed back in there. This is kind of like an overload spring. That's why it's dead straight. Just as the suspension comes up, and if it gets to the point where it gets completely flat, this comes into effect. You kind of want to watch the orientation too, because the hole's not in the center of the spring. I believe it's offset by about an inch and a half. All right. So to get this one out, these guys are holding me. No, showing. Those guys are holding me. So let me see if I can get in there and bend them out of our way. Not with that screwdriver, it ain't gonna happen. Let's go with this guy. Get the drive in there. brake line back by the brake drum.
free. That side, you just gotta do the same to the other side. But uh, actually, we could, probably, we could probably sneak this one out, get it out of our way. take a minute I want to clean up all these uh, unions right here and then we'll see how we make out with uh, reassembling that pack this is the new one next to the old one this is the hole I'm talking about if you look I don't know if you could see on the right hand side over here this one's past it by about an inch or two yeah you can see it and then if I go to line them up now you can see they're on the money So it was the other side. I was going to pop the old wear pads off the old spring, but when I took the tape off, it came with some new ones. These guys. A little noise reduction. Friction reduction pads there. All right, still have to clean it up. Just wanted to show that. So I cleaned it up and trying to uh, reassemble, and just one thing I wanted to show was uh, one of the bolts that came with it. It's not a regular bolt. If you look at the, uh, the ass end of it. It's just a round plug, and with that round plug, is supposed to do is it go on the top of the perch uh, of the axle and that locates the axle over the center of the um, springs so your alignment's not out of whack that's why it's also important for all your holes to be center well this one kind of keys you but if you were to have the main leaf and you spun around backwards it, uh, your axle's going to be off you be doing a funky alignment so anyway so we're going to try reassembling that stack back together I'm probably going to with some clampage but uh, sometimes you could stack the stuff in the bottom, work your way up, try to clamp it all together. But if it's just too far spread apart, sometimes it's better to take a bolt, stick a bolt in from the top, uh, squeeze the stack up together. Like you can put one on at a time and kind of squeeze the whole pack together. Once you got it clamped good with a couple of C clamps, then you could pull this bolt out, fish this one into the bottom, and then tighten it up. But you don't want to tighten the leaf spring pack up with the bolt. The bolt's not strong enough to do that. You'll end up uh, probably snapping it and then you release a, a lot of energy when that happens. All right, let's see if you can get that. I just have the bolt uh, hand tight right now just to try to hold these two pieces together. Let's see if we can uh, fish them down into there. I'm gonna try jacking that assembly up to get it to move your guy's location. There you go. I could see and you could see at the same time. Nut on there. Where'd you go? Let's see how we do just jacking it into place, see if that'll go. I'm gonna kick the axle so we get it a little bit more straight. Got away with 
no C clamps. Alright, well, I'm gonna go run that guy down. This plate can go on later. It uh, just kind of helps hold the U bolts, but I'm gonna run that sucker down and uh, we'll start getting those U bolts back on. Yeah, see how well this goes together. Of course. My truck lost its satellite location. Let's see how close these U bolts are to uh, fitting on this guy. Right on the money. Those guys are good. Admittedly, that was the easy part. The hard part is getting the bottom to line up. So I'm going to go hop on a creeper and go underneath and uh, we'll start the. Yeah, let's see how much that fights us. I believe it's unidirectional. I don't see anything causing it to have to say that way, or that way kind of deal. Or that way, more likely. Hammer time! Looks like I might have to cut off some... some thread after this. Well, it's nice they didn't have to use the, the C-clamps to squeeze the pack together. The uh, If they're off the car, I know you definitely got to kind of do that. But I think us having the capacity of the floor jack under the axle pushing it up may have helped. A little bit of air. See if the air hose doesn't take you guys out. Apologize if it does. Here we go. Torque the spec. left to do is throw the tire on, put our shock back together again. And I think we'll be good to go. I almost forgot about these guys. It has a sleeve on the inside of it too. And first I was thinking the sleeve is more to kind of roll on the spring, but it's not. It just allows you to bring it in and uh, uh, have a stop for these guys or else you can just keep on going and you know bend that sucker right over so that's just all it's intended for and that's pretty much it other than putting the tire on 
But I'm going to leave that off because while this truck is in here, I want to do a uh, uh, oil undercoat on this probably tomorrow. And I don't need the truck. You can kind of see the stuff I've done in the past and then the dirt sticks to it. But uh, that's for another video. But uh, it worked out really good. Uh, no issues. Took about 25 minutes. Uh, the air tools definitely make the... Uh, the job a lot easier. It went from a 25 minute job, could have been one of those half a day to an all day job, trying to do it at home with uh, unbolting that stuff. So uh, that's gonna be about it for this. Again, thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Hey, if you're still watching, this is uh, the ends of that broken spring. I took it on the wire wheel and I cleaned it up. I wanted to see if I could tell if there was something that just caused that. But I don't, I just see a very uh, arbitrary crack in it, nothing. Uh... Seems kind of deep inside there. Uh, as far as the failure on these, it seems like all the Tundras, the fail is on the driver's side this same leaf it all seems to be the same one i know tacomas have a, a recall for springs but the tundras do not and they don't admit to anything but a bunch of people on forums are talking about them so who knows must be some kind of failure in them they're all being done in the same place